Hello, hello, hello. Um, well, as for today, so I will be discussing about the different kinds of archetypes. So uh, maybe you will take the board exam this March or whenever you want to, or maybe you just want to learn. So, you know, archetypes, these are one of the things that um, malagi nating nakakaligtaan. You know, these are the things that you don't really expect to come out, but they do come out of the board exam. So these are the things that uh, we often, you know, take for granted. Ah, baka hindi mabas, or baka walang mabas, or you're not aware na lalabas pala. So it has came out with, or it has come out to every board exam in the last couple of seasons, and that's why let's try to get to know about it. Okay, so archetypes, it's like a representation or like a symbol of a story, you know? So, uh, like a familiar character, symbol, or idea that appears in many different stories and represents something we all understand and recognize. So, para siya, I don't want to say a routine. It's like an outline, you know, or like a representation. So, it will give you an idea kung anong klaseng character yan, kung anong klaseng story yan, based on archetype and there are different kinds when i took the board exam there was an archetype question there and i think the last september there was also another archetype question at iba iba yung tinatanong so i think it's good now we get familiar with the others okay so let's start with character archetype there are many kinds the first one is the scapegoat archetype so this represents a character who is unfairly blamed or punished for mistakes or wrongdoings of others. So these are the characters na kahit na hindi naman nila kasalanan, sa kanila napupunta yung punishment. So that's a scapegoat. Parang sila yung, yeah, <laughs> sila yung pinaparosahan sa hindi nila kasalanan. So scapegoat archetype, okay? Example ng scapegoat archetype, I am. Um, Tributes in the in the Hunger Games series. So, bakit? Kasi yung tributes um, in Panem, like yung place na let's call Panem, there are actually 13 districts. So, nawala yung district 13, it was reduced to 12. And these 12 districts, they once raised a rebellion to their government. And then, nanalo yung government, so every year, they get um, they get to you know have this activity called the Hunger Games in which every district magbibigay sila ng dalawang representative or bubunot sila ng dalawang representative from their districts to fight in the Hunger Games in which only one will live and you know if you die then you lose if you if you if you live then you win so hindi naman nila kasalanan yung rebellion or maybe they were not born yet during the rebellion but they are the ones punished in tributes okay so katniss everdeen was yeah always the winner there um, you should if i'm sure you're pretty familiar with hunger games masikat naman yung hunger games eh? but not all of us so yeah anyway that's how that in is scapegoat archetype okay and mind you in in a certain character hindi lang isang archetype yung mirror represent niya okay there could be a lot of archetypes so um we have to um, analyze the question well you know mas talaga yung palaging advice diba with taking the board exam nakadepende talaga kung gaano kalakas yung analysis mo next we have the shape shifter archetype so a character who is not what they initially appear to be so shapeshifter, this is not yung physical na nagiging pusa or nagiging aso pagabi. That's shapeshifter also. But shapeshifter archetype, ito yung pabago-bago yung personality or yung character niya within the span of the story. So they can change their yeah, personality, loyalty, or motivation throughout the story. So making them unpredictable. So hindi natin malalaman kung ano ba yung susunod niya gagawin or kanino ba siya susunod na papanig. It's because, yeah, they have this shapeshifter archetype. So making them unpredictable and creating tension or suspense. So again, it's not the physical na nagbago-bago yung anyo na niya. It's the personality that changes. 
So big example dito is actually during my board exam, I got this one incorrectly because I answered Lord Voldemort. Uh, if you don't know anything about Harry Potter, you can scan through my videos. I also have a Harry Potter very simple explanation there <laughs> just to get you familiarized. So anyway, bakit ba shapeshifter si Professor Severus Snape? Si Snape kasi, um, actually teacher siya ni Harry, but in the first parts of the story, talaga makikita mo na kalaban siya. You know, like he's, he's a villain. He hates Harry so much. So he lets Harry go through so many different things. Kaya makikita mo kalaban siya. And then by the end, you will actually change your perspective. Like, oh, that's why. Oh, hindi siya kalaban. Oh, mabait pala si Snape. Blah, 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 blah. So siya yung shapeshifter doon sa Harry Potter. Okay, actually, there are so many shapeshifters sa Harry Potter. See, Professor McGonagall, Sirius Black, Remus Lupin. But again, it's not about physical. So it's a good method then is Severus Snape. Next, trickster archetype. So a mischievous character known for playing pranks, causing chaos, and challenging the status quo. So kapag trickster, it's like they enjoy, para bang, and they masochism, they, they enjoy chaos. <laughs> they enjoy chaos. So kasi minsan malilita tayo with the jester and the trickster archetype. Yung jester archetype, we'll discuss it later, okay? So a mischievous character. So perfect example natin dito is... Of course, Loki, if you're familiar with the Marvels. <laughs> so, he is a brother of Thor. Because power kasi ni Loki is he can change appearance. So, sometimes he does funny stuff. Para lang magkagulo, you know. But he's really funny, but sometimes he's also very, very dangerous. So, he has, or he, it's his character is, or it is categorized to the trickster archetype. So playing tricks. Next one, theme fatale archetype. I I hope I read that correctly. Until now, hindi pa rin, hindi pa rin ako familiar. I did not look at. I did not look up the same. Anyway, so this is a seductive and enigmatic female character who uses her charm and allure to manipulate others. So often leading others to their downfall. So minsan, na na na, yung this kind of archetype is nang aakit sila. You know, they use their physicality, they seduce nila yung mga, ano, their, their targets or their victims. And then pag na-seduce na nila, and then doon nila, you know, pinapatay or whatever. So that's what we call the theme fatale. Examples natin dito, marami tayong examples, so I'll disagree. You have Helen of Troy, Cersei, Scylla, oh my god, the Sirens, Medea, Medusa. So yung sa the Sirens, di ba? Masiseduce ka because, oh my gosh, ang ganda ng boses, na 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 na, so sundan mo, hanggang sa doon mo pala malaman na, oh my gosh, it's a monster. So, tawag natin dyan is the theme fatale archetype, okay? Next one, we have the mentor archetype. So, it involves a reversal of the typical mentor-mentee dynamic. So, the mentor learns valuable lessons from the mentee. So often reflecting the idea that wisdom can come from unexpected sources. Okay, mentor archetype. I think it's pretty much self-explanatory. Sample natin dyan is Master Yoda from Star Wars. Um, if you know, kind of know why, I just included this as an example because siya yung alumapa most of the examples na lumabas sa researches ko, but I am not really familiar with Star Wars. I am so sorry. Okay, but yeah, he is a mentor and he is a very, very wise guy. Next, we have the reluctant hero archetype. So a character who initially resists or hesitates to embrace the heroic role. So these were, you know, mga mahiyain na heroes. And sometimes they decline kung ano talaga yung, you know, para sa kanila, what they're destined to be but ultimately rises to the occasion and fulfills their destiny. So these were those, you know, ayaw ko, hindi ko gusto, you know, they want to live a simple life, ayaw nila maging hero, but eventually they become a one. So that's what we call the reluctant hero archetype. So an um, example of this one is Frodo in The Lord of the Rings. So Frodo was actually, I think, pamangkin siya ni Bilbo, and he was the one assigned to deliver the ring to Mount Doom, you know, para doon i-destroy yung ring, the Lord of the Rings. 
of course, mag- of course, you'll be scared, but I don't know anything. I'm just a hobbit. I have no powers. I I have no skill. Bakit naman ako yung magiging assigned dyan? But, um, yeah, eventually, naging no choice si Frodo. So, yeah, he brought the ring to Mount Doom and destroyed it. So, reluctant hero. Next, you have the Jester archetype. So, ito yung character known for their humor with an ability to provide comic relief in a story. So, they often use humor to comment on serious matters. So, sometimes, meron mga eksena sa stories na talagang sobrang intense na yung emotion. And then, if there is a character there that belongs to this Jester archetype, so, they just, you know, cut the intense part and make everyone laugh. Diba? Maybe they will say a sentence or a funny word or a funny comeback, come back, and then nakakatuwa na siya. So, you know, you will know kasi if just your archetype, because every time they are in the scene, the scene is always funny. So, yun yung kaibahan ng jester at trickster. Okay, yung trickster, parang there is chaos upcoming. <laughs> but with jester, it's just funny. So, example natin dito is... Fred and George Weasley and Harry Potter. They are actually one of the best characters. They are really funny and they are very happy-go-lucky twins. And even, I think, in real life, napanood ko yung interviews nila, both of them are also so funny. So, yeah, in character. Anyway, that's the Jester archetype. Now, those were the seven kinds of archetypes. So let's have a review. Jester, Reluctant Hero, Mentor, Fiend Fatal, Trickster, Shapeshifter, and the Scapegoat Archetype, okay? So, now, apart from the character archetypes, we also have this what we call the Story Archetype. So, there are so many, as in so many Story Archetypes, actually. But I chose this one, Christopher Booker's Story Archetype. The rest naman kasi are parang understandable na, like, the hero, the lover, so it's self-explanatory, diba? But these are, maybe, it, it will take us by surprise, you know. Baka naman lumabas to and <laughs> we're not even familiar. So the first one is overcoming the monster. So this is where the hero must destroy the monster to restore balance to the world. Overcoming the monster. So examples are evil humans. Okay? Yung monster, not necessarily yung talaga monster na monster, okay? It could be evil humans, if mythical creature naman, or mythological creature, it could be cyclops. So folklore, we have vampires, witches, werewolves, diba? Uh, religious monsters, you have demons. I think in, you know, ex- exorcism stories, we have that. So aliens, we have predators, megamind. For wild creatures, we have bears or sharks. So not necessarily monster, okay? Like, it could be, yeah, merong extreme na kalaban doon. So of course, Avengers, you, they had to fight Thanos, right? So there. <laughs> That's overcoming the monster. Tawag natin dyan, okay? Next, we have rags to riches. This is where a modest and moral but down, downtrodden character achieves a happy ending when their natural talents are displayed to the world at large. So rags, I think from a very, yeah, from a, a very poor, I think yung typical dyan is yung mahirap lang and then it, they rise up to their situation, right? So example natin dyan is Cinderella and Aladdin. So Aladdin was a really good singer and ano pa yung mga, yeah, I think if I remember clearly, he played with the fireworks or something, di ba? For Cinderella, it's the same. She was a designer. She designed her own dress. She was also a singer. So based on her real life adaptation, so kumanta kanta lang siya, di ba? <laughs> and then she turned from rags to riches. So that's another archetype. Next, you have the quest. So the main character must re- must reach a certain location, attain a certain object, or fulfill a certain objective while conquering many obstacles along the way. The quest archetype. So ito yung parang journey, right? So for example, so Lord of the Rings, as I've mentioned, when they tried to take the ring to... Bakit ba? Okay, uh, 
I think I will also have another video, a separate video. I will talk about the Lord of the Rings, okay? So there's this evil ring na pag-aari ni um, Sauron, the, the villain there. And if he gets the ring, he'll become really, really powerful, unstoppable, and whatsoever. So yung goal nila is they will try to destroy the ring. And there. So, saan ba destroy yung ring? <laughs> Doon din kung saan nakatira yung villain. So, they have to make the journey. They have to avoid evil eyes. Kasi, of course, they can be attacked along the way. And pwede silang patayin. And pwede i-claim ng kalaban yung ring, di ba? So, they have to be very, very careful. So, they were along with a wizard. They were along with warriors during their journey para lang madala yung ring doon. And there were a lot of obstacles. Yep. And an example of um, the quest. I'm not sure if you've seen the movie Journey to the West. I remember that just now. So long ago that it on, right? Yung sa Buddhism. <laughs> I think it's a Chinese film. I'm not sure. I will rewatch that. It's also an example of the quest archetype. Next, you have comedy. So a light and humorous tone. Okay, kapag comedy, it's a happy and cheerful ending. That's it. Okay. So example natin dito is William Shakespeare's a Midsummer Night's Dream and Pride and Prejudice. Opposite ng comedy is tragedy. So, kapag tragedy, tragic yung ending. Okay, comedy, cheerful yung ending. Tragedy naman, tragic yung ending. And pinaka-example natin sa tragedy is, of course, the two lovers who died at the end. <laughs> Romeo and Juliet there. Next, you have the rebirth, often found in religious and creation myths, but the rebirth can simply be dramatic transformation of the main character. So, you know, my example of rebirth is yung beast, sa Yuri and the Beast, it's like a rebirth, kasi nung prince, si beast, when he was still a prince, he was very cruel, diba? Ayaw niya sa mahihirap, ayaw niya sa pangit, and all, whatsoever. And then, naging beast siya, and then, that's when he fell in love and saw things in a different perspective. So, nung naging prince ulit siya, he was this loving and kind, bago yung character niya. So, that's an example of a rebirth archetype. archetype okay, a dramatic transformation of the main character. Now, let's have a quick drill. I would like you to answer. You can comment down your answers or you can just guess, okay? So, what archetype best describes a character who is unfairly blamed or punished for the mistakes of others? Is this shapeshifter, scapegoat, trickster, or mentor? In five, four, three, two, one. That is scapegoat archetype. Oh, it's very well, it's very easy. <laughs> Good for you. Good for you. Next one, which archetype involves a character who initially resists? or hesitates to embrace the heroic role, but eventually rises to the occasion. So at first, ayaw nila yung nakadestinan sa kanila. Maybe they want a simple life, or they don't want any of those, you know, responsibilities and whatever. <laughs> but eventually, they had to do it. So is it trickster, rags to riches, reluctant hero, or quest? In five, four, three, two, and one. That is... Okay, reluctant hero. Well done. Next, <laughs> it's yeah, understandable. Though. The jester archetype is known for challenging the status quo, playing pranks and causing chaos, providing comic relief, or fulfilling a heroic destiny. In five, four, three, two, one. Again, jester archetype. If these characters are on the scene, you have to expect that the scene is funny. That's the jester archetype. So it provides a comic relief. So I think yung A and B, they are trickster archetype. Yung letter D naman, it's, yeah, reluctant hero or the hero. I didn't discuss the very simple archetypes. Next, you have the quest archetype involves the main character providing a comic relief. Playing pranks, destroying a monster, or fulfilling a certain objective while overcoming obstacles. Mom, sana ganito lang yung questions doon. Actually, the questions will be really twist twisted, you know? Maybe they will give you stories or characters and you have to identify 
anong klase ng archetype yun. That's why I think, in my way of teaching talaga, it's in, in a simple, straightforward way, para kahit pagbalik-balik ta rin yung questions doon, um, we're still able to answer, you know. Maganda pa rin na malaman natin yung pinaka-basic kung ano bagay-bagay. Alright, anyway, correct answer natin is, yeah, fulfilling a certain objective. That's the quest. So, A and B, we have already talked about this one. They are, or these are trickster. And destroying a monster naman, it's another archetype. So, overcoming obstacles while ginagawa kong ano yung, ma- para ma-achieve yung goal, that is the quest archetype, okay? Now, Simba in the Lion King story is an example of which archetype? Is it scapegoat, trickster, mentor, or jester? So, what do you think is the answer? Simba. Actually, sobrang ganda ng Lion King. Favorite character ko sa Lion King is Scar. Do you know that Scar kasi, it's para siyang may, may different name siya. But I just forgot. Kasi yung brother ni Scar is si Mufasa. The, the, the Lion King. The King Lion. <laughs> really? So... Oh my gosh, I forgot the name, the original name of Scar. Because he was called Scar because of the scar, say sa kanya mukha, right? But what was his name before he was he got the scar? Basta yung meaning ng name niya doon is like a trash. So trash yung name niya. While Mufasa in translation it means king. Kaya sobra yung hatred. Of course, naman kapag ako, yung kapatid ko, pangalan niya king, tapos ako trash. Sino ba naman matutuwa dyan? Diba? And that's why he became the villain that he is. But I really like him. He's so smart. Diba? Like the way he, you know. I think if people are treated well, if people are understood better, then we will kind of know, we will kind of realize bakit naging ganyan sila. And maybe, okay, they are bad in nature, but we could have helped them. Right? I think there are so many instances like this in real life. But anyway, hindi naman Lion King yung pinag-uusapan natin. <laughs> so Simba is actually a scapegoat archetype. Bakit? Kasi di ba when he was yung baby pa si Simba? Baby pa? Ano bang tawag sa baby lion? So he was blamed for the death of his father. Right? It's because of you. And kasi they, they were like roaring and then there was like a stampede and then you know, Mufasa tried to save Simba, but eventually si Mufasa yung namatay. So he was blamed, and Scar told him to run. Run, Simba, run as far as you can. At doon, namuhay siya sa, you know, other part of, of the world. And then he met friends. Yeah, the Hakuna Matata friends. <laughs> and that's why, kahit hindi naman talaga niya kasalanan, naging exile siya. So actually, yung nagpatay naman talaga, kay, matutulungan naman talaga si Mufasa, but... Scar didn't help him, right? Scar eventually killed Mufasa, but Simba was the one blamed for that. So, scapegoat archetype. Hindi naman niya kasalanan, pero siya yung naging exile. Okay? Next. Mary and Pippin from J.R.R. Tolkien's The Lord of the Rings are examples of which archetype? So, J.R.R. Tolkien siya yung author ng Lord of the Rings, okay? So, scapegoat, trickster, mentor, or jester? Actually, it could be two. So, Mary and Pippin can be both trickster or jester. Sometimes they are both really funny. And sometimes, because of how funny they are, they can cause chaos. So one time, may not touch, it's, I, I forgot, was it Mary or Pippin? And then they may not hold them so well because of Mary or Pippin, and then they awoken up. They woken up the monster down there. So trickster archetype, you know, they cause chaos. There are pranks or tricks, but eventually it can cause danger to the people around them. So trickster archetype, but could be jester too, okay? However, kapag that may dalawang options, just choose trickster. Next, which story archetypes involves the hero destroying a certain enemy to restore balance to the world? That is, yeah, overcome the monster. As I said earlier, your monster, not necessarily the talagang monster, 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 okay? It could be a certain enemy, an evil human being. Maybe your boss is evil or a serial killer, right? Or maybe a bear, a shark, a jaws, whatever. So overcoming the monster. 
Next, which story archetype is Finding Nemo? Is it Rags to Riches, the quest, overcoming the monster, or tragedy? This has to be the quest. I I missed. Uh, na, na, I forgot na anong story sa Finding Nemo. Right? Yeah, I think he was brought into the human world. And then yung dad niya is talagang hinanap siya. Yeah, the daddy and Dory together. Or was that Nemo and Dory together? Kasi the may latest, latest release then yung Finding Dory, right? Anyway, I have to rewatch. But anyway, Finding Nemo is an example of the quest, okay? And how to have Nemo and the dad yeah, be together again. There. And, oh my gosh, I have a lot of questions. In the Rags to Riches archetype, the character achieves a happy ending by embracing their flaws, playing pranks, and causing chaos, displaying their natural talents, or fulfilling a quest. In five, four, three, two, one, that should be the natural talents. Okay, kasi wala naman silang pera, so they rise to the occasion just by embracing who they are and their natural talents, diba? Anyway, so I think that's the end. I did not have a uh, last, I know. Um, right. Oh, I'm so big. Anyway, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I'll have a, a lot of other lectures. So I'll go live on Facebook. You can also check in there. I have a lot of reels I created over the years as techniques and how to answer a board exam and what kind of board exam questions are there. So I think that can help you a lot. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.